Hello everyone, this is Mitch from Garage Games. You're watching another casual video tutorial. The scope of this tutorial is to show how easy it is to create assets for Torque 2D without having to use an editor. Now we have provided plugins for Texture Packer and Swap Text. These tools can combine multiple textures together to create a sprite atlas, and then our plugins allow you to export directly to a uh, T2D image asset. If you do not want to use a third party tool, uh, then you can create your assets by hand. For my video, I'm going to use the XML format. You have the option to create assets using other formats such as binary or JSON. I've chosen XML because I'm used to it and I have some great tools that make it easy for me to create uh, assets quickly. Now, XML also allows me to point to a schema file which will give me all kinds of handy features like auto-completion, suggestions, and validation. And before we get started, I'd like to emphasize what I will be covering and what I will not be covering. I will cover adding a new module to the sandbox, creating assets in XML, modifying asset properties, and then finally displaying objects in a T2D scene that use the assets I'll create. I will show how to create an example of each asset type available in the current in, uh, engine. What I will not be covering is every single asset field. And this is more of a quick start, so if you want to know every field, you should check our wiki and the source code. I will not be going through any gameplay or major scripting. The toy I'm creating is very basic. And finally, I will not be showing how to create new asset types. That involves some C++ coding, and it's not ideal for newcomers watching this video. So all you need to follow along with this tutorial or to create your own assets is a copy of Torp TD and a text editor. Now, any basic text editor should do as long as it's not introducing invisible characters. So on Windows, you could just use uh, Notepad and just create them, in this, and uh, you'll be good to go. Now, on Windows, I use Visual Studio 2012 Express for my XML editing and torsion for my script editing. This video is being recorded on my MacBook, so I'm running Apple's OS X. And whenever I'm on this OS, I use app code for all my development. And you'll see all the various little tips and tricks, that, things that I've set up in app code, but the, the premise of this tutorial, the real content of it, is cross-platform. So it should be working no matter what platform you're working on. All right, well, with all that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, it's time to generate a schema. I mentioned this before, and uh, XML schema is basically a rule set, uh, legal bindings for editing an XML file. And when you're just editing it, say, in Notepad, you don't get any of that. You can point to an XML schema, but you won't get any benefit out of it. Well, now, when you're using a tool that has robust XML editing, like Visual Studio or App Code, uh, you can point to a schema, and it'll uh, def help you define elements that can appear in a document, uh, what attributes you can use, what can be a child of a you know a parent element. And for Torque 2D, we've built this into the source, but you do have to generate it. So what I've done is I've gone to uh, um, my default preferences, and right around line 57, depending on you know, which version of Torque you're using, there's this pref ttd Tamil schema. And normally it looks like this, where it's blank. And if you want to generate a schema, you need to give a name, extension, and a path. Now, I'm not providing a path because when I generate the schema, it's going to dump it right into my torque 2 d directory, right where the executable and main.cs exist. So that's fine for me. And at this point, you can generate the schema whenever you want, however you want. You could define that global variable and then run torque 2 d and call a function, or you can uh, write this in another script. Out of my own habit, what I like to do is just generate right from the start, quit from torque 2 d review the schema, and then undo script changes. So that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to call uh, generate Tamil schema, and then I immediately want to quit. And I'm going to have to undo these changes, but this is just the fastest way for me personally to generate the schema. If I run Torque to D, it's going to generate, quit, and then if I go to my folder right here, there it is. There's my uh, XSD file. If I drop that inside of app code, this shows that it seems to be working for me. If you have just very few file lines or nothing in there, then something went wrong because then you see this is a very large file. Uh, and you'll recognize a lot of things in here, like in the, the particle section, there's an element called emission arc, and it'll allow for complex choices. But you know, that's, this, that's explaining this uh, step by step is outside of the scope. The important part is now I have my schema, which is going to make it easier for me to generate. Uh, XML files which will represent my assets. So before I do anything, I'm going to go back into the main.cs for app core. I'm going to get rid of that line and just to make sure I'm going to run torque td and we're all good. 
now I have my schema file, so it's time to create some modules, some assets, and get this running inside of Tort 2D. Before I create any files, I'm going to show you my development environment real quick. As you can see, I've already got Tort 2D running, which means I've cloned the repository and compiled the engine previously. Down in my shortcuts, I've got a link to that compiled runtime in my console log. And here is app code. And as I mentioned before, app code is my ID of choice on OS X. It allows me to do all my source editing, script editing, XML editing, everything else. And I'm going to create, uh, keep the, the video air trained on the actual content of it. So before, I had mentioned the XML schema. Um, so if you don't know about it, whenever you're editing an XML file, you can point to a schema. And what it is, is it defines a, a legal kind of acceptable criteria for the XML file. So a schema can define the elements that can appear in the document, the attributes, which elements are child uh, elements, or and you know various other things. You'll get the idea once I get going, but we don't ship a schema file with Tort2D. You actually need to generate it first. So the first thing I do is I go to AppCore Scripts Default Preferences.cs, and then I look at, locate this global variable. And when this is not set, you will not be able to uh, generate a schema on its own. So what I'm going to do is enter in what that global variable is going to be. And when I use this, this is actually the file path name and extension without doing any extra stuff like dot dot slash or applications or whatever. Just by putting it like this, it's going to dump it into the root of my Torque2D repository. And now, when I want to actually create that, I'll go to, for instance, uh, I'm going to do this after the default preferences.cs gets set. I'm going to do uh, generate TAML schema. And I really don't want to do anything else after that. I just want to generate it and view it. So I'm going to quit afterwards. And you know, this, this is something you can call from the console. You can do this in another script. As long as that global variable is set, let me show that again. As long as this is set, and then you call generate uh, TAML schema, you should be fine. And this right here, what I'm doing is just my own habit. This is what I want to do is just quickly generate it, quit, view it, and then I'll take this line out. So I'm going to run torque 2 d It should quit immediately. And now, if I go to my directory, right where the torque 2 d executable is, there's my schema file. Let me drop that inside of app code. So you can see it. And yes, it's also an XML file. If you have this, that means your schema was generated properly. And if you're familiar with tort 2 d by now, you should start recognizing some things like um, what's a string and what's a rect f. You know, as I go further down, I've got classes I recognize. And this is just these are all just rules. This shows that when uh, I'm editing an XML file and it points to the schema, I'll be told whether I'm breaking the rules or I'll get suggestions. So that's all we need to do right now. This is, I have my schema and I'd like to start editing. So I'm going to go back to my app core main.cs and I'm just going to delete those. Save and run again. There we go. So Torque 2D is back up and running again. And so if I jump in, here are all my toys. You know, these all ship with Torque 2D. So I've got the truck toy, soft body, and everything else. And for this particular tutorial, I want to create my own toy, and it's essentially I'm just creating a module with a specific category that will load up in the sandbox. But this uh, toy, I'm just going to name it My Assets. I'm going to give it a bunch of images and some audio, and I'm going to create assets out of it. And by the time I'm finished, or at least after I, I start a few times, it'll start showing up in this list. So I'm going to shut down Torque TD, and I'm going to use app code to drive a lot of this. And uh, we have other tutorials that will take you step by step of creating, say, you know, a module definition or you know, quickly creating a script. I'm going to use app code that I've already got set up with some shortcuts, file templates, so I can just, in a couple of clicks, just produce the files. And that way we can focus on the real important stuff in this video, which is creating an asset, assigning the fields, and making it show up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my new module. Right, now that I have now that I have my schema, I'm going to create my module. And do you have a few different ways of doing this. I'm just going to show you how I do it in app code. If you want more detailed instructions, we have some other tutorials out there, but I'll walk through a little bit. And a lot of this has to do with just my own personal preferences, how I like to develop, what I use to develop, and then what kind of standards I set for myself. So when I'm defining my module, I'm just going to go into my modules folder, 
and I have app code set up with some nice file templates but they also have a few built in such as creating a folder with reference and this will create a folder on my hard drive and it will immediately add it as a reference into my modules uh, or inside of this project so I'm going to create my assets which is the root folder of the new module I'll be creating and as you can see it showed up here and if I were to switch over to my actual file browser you can see my assets is here but it's empty and then from here I'm going to use some shortcuts that I've learned over the past few weeks using app code so I'm going to create a folder called version 1 so I could have multiple versions of this if I wanted and then I'm going to have an assets directory underneath that and this is where I'm going to create uh, subfolders that will contain the actual raw files, the, the images, the audio files and everything else and it's just how I like to organize things. So I'm going to create a folder for each kind of asset type. I'm going to create one for images, animations, audio, particles. Now if I expand this out, scroll down a little bit, and there's all of those. And here are all the folders that I just created. And right now there's nothing else in there. Uh, so I actually still need to make a module definition and create a script file to get all things running. So I guess that's uh, the next step here is let's actually make the module definition.